Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm not sure when you're able to sit down and watch this video, but thank you for sticking with us in this time, for joining your brothers and sisters of the Tomorrow River Parish, and for praying. How are you doing? I'm wondering if you're able to hear the birds sing and see them perching on the tree above you as you sit and rest a while. I've been praying for you. We've all been praying for you. Are you able to take a deeper breath to find that breath of God that God has given you so that you can be the blessing in this world that God intended you to be? The focus of my follow-up remarks are going to be about the spiritual practice and gift of discernment because most of you who uh, responded to my sermon had questions or comments about discernment. The aspect of the command Jesus gives, go, of course, that we focus on is where, when, how. How does one discern the next steps? My comments are going to be short and sweet and to the point. They're intended to inspire you, but also to give you a little education about the spiritual gift and the spiritual practice of discernment. I want to help you follow Jesus' command to go, which will require some effort on your part and on our part together. In our current times of natural un national unrest, protest, conversations around social justice, racism, the nature of society, the pandemic, and our current phase one status as a church, regional and national in the ELCA, seeking Jesus' words for us, praying for answers to the question, Jesus, what would you ask of us, becomes pretty important. As I covered in detail, the answers from Jesus' heart do not first come to us in the form of a government policy. We are to address the wounds around us, and we do not have to wait. But we do need to carefully discern what is the next for us, for the church, for our community, and for society. What is discernment? Well, discernment is both, as I said, a spiritual practice, but it is also listed as a spiritual gift in Scripture. A spiritual practice is something, an action, that is done in faith on a regular basis so that the individual can grow in both faith and wisdom. And it can be a better part of guiding a group towards what Jesus would have us do and be both individually and together. The trick here is part of the practice of discernment, a very important part, is to practice it as it was intended, within the community of faith, the body of Christ. You and I are not lone rangers doing something commanded by God in a vacuum. I said it is practice, something someone does, something a group or a church does together, but I also said it is listed as a spiritual gift, and you can look up a list, for instance, in 1 Corinthians 12. Um, you can also see some comments about spiritual gifts in Ephesians 4. But if you do read them, make sure that you read them within the context um, in which they are placed. There are people within the body of Christ that naturally carry this gift of discernment. It is just a part of them given for God's use in their baptism. But their gift is not just for themselves, but for the whole body of Christ. And Ephesians 4 says, Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. In everyday life, even many times a day, one can pray for discernment about what it is God would have us do or be in any given situation. In times of need, in times of crisis, we can ask for wisdom and ask for God to reveal the better path among the many laid out before us. When a community or a church is trying to figure out what to do, they can do this important work together. 
Is this necessary? Can't one person decide for the whole? Well, scripture gives us the answer and tradition gives us the answer and it is no. If something impacts the whole and all matters of faith do, it cannot be done solely alone. Discernment is something that is done as a practice together in small groups, in leadership, with our partners in ministry, with our called pastors, etc. Miriam Webster's first dictionary meaning for discernment was listed as the ability to judge well. As the second meaning, it defines us, defines it in Christian context, perception and the absence of judgment with a view to obtaining spiritual guidance and spiritual understanding. Imagine my surprise, especially in our context uh, this week, at reading the sentence that was given as an example for the second Christian use definition of the word discernment. So this is the sentence, you know, they sometimes have a sentence um, where it can be used. Without providing for a time of healing and discernment, there will be no hope of living through this present moment without a shattering of our common life. <laughs> well, it was a big surprise to see that sentence. Isn't it true? Discernment is tricky. Never ever underestimate the propensity of the hum that the human has for justifying their actions. Religious groups and individuals have for a very long time made a plan rooted in really self-aggrandizement or self-gain. In a church body, in a church, or in a movement, all neatly packaged in spiritual language, calling it God's plan. I can't tell you how many times I have heard, God told me to do this. Well, as a beginning discussion, there is nothing wrong with that sentence, but it never ends there. It does not work that way. Individuals, churches, and whole nations have been hurt by this erroneous understanding of how the Holy Spirit and discernment works. The kind of discernment we are talking about involves multiple things. So first would be, of course, prayer, study, connection to the voices of the past, connection to the voices present, connection to all the aspects of our shared life together, personal, local, regional, national, and global. Proper reflection, which is doing theology that aligns with Jesus' work and life. Well, this is a pretty big discussion, which we can get into and we need to get into, <clears throat> but won't be able to get into in the depth that is required. We'll have to do it um, at a later time in that broader sense. But suffice it to say that we do not discern alone and in a vacuum. Yes, I am a part of the discernment process regarding my life and the life of the community and church to which I belong. But I'm only a part, a significant part, yes. But God has placed me within a particular community and family of people all following Jesus together. And I do not and should not and really cannot operate alone. That said, get praying and pray together with others. We can do this online without physically assembling. Ask others to pray for you. Ask your pastors to discern with you. We pray, we listen, and we do it together. And at a certain point, we act. And that is a part of the discernment process. The runway is not all laid out with traffic controllers holding LED lights. I wish it were that way. We individually and collectively have the Holy Spirit, of course, but sometimes, especially when there is a lot at stake, it's hard to know, is this the voice of heaven speaking to me or is this some kind of echo chamber? Is it fear talking or is it faith? If we want to look for those who held the flags of faith on the runway, 
for the church. We look to the voices of the past, the community of saints who went before us. Our best LED lights are our callings in Christ laid out for us in our baptism and in our affirmation of baptism. And you can find those beautiful words laid out for you in the ELW. Our current context and communities of faith mark the directions of our response to God's call to go. Our new go has some defined borders on it. We aren't doing a lot of traveling, so we have to be creative. We have to work harder to discern. We have to experiment with some new tools. We have to come together in new ways and with greater awareness of the old ways, the community of saints all around us. And it means we will grow in faith. And that is exciting because Jesus promises to be with us all the way and all the more when we are in need. Amen? Amen.